afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the national anthem. Good morning and welcome. Welcome students, faculty, families, and friends. And a very special welcome to our School of Journalism graduating seniors. We are here today to celebrate a milestone achievement in your lives, the end of one journey the beginning of another. You have survived, even thrived, during four, five, six years of college. But who's counting? You have succeeded where many others have failed. And you have made it despite the many challenges and distractions of college life. And you have done it mostly on your own, but with more than a little help from your friends and family. At this time, I would like to ask the parents to please rise so we can acknowledge you and your accomplishment. <laughs> Graduating seniors and graduates, graduate students, You've also had some help from the School of Journalism faculty who guided you, pushed you, praised you, yes, sometimes yelled at you, but who in the end taught you how to be responsible and committed media professionals. Your success is also their success. And at this time, I'd like to ask our wonderful School of Journalism faculty to please stand. And so today, we celebrate your past achievements and we celebrate your future as we launch you out into the real world, the world of getting a job, moving out on your own, doing your own laundry, and paying back your college loans. Now, there's no doubt that you are leaving college during challenging times. While the economy is recovering and hiring is picking up, it may still take some time and perseverance to find your first job. You are also entering a professional environment that is very much in flux. Our business, the business of news and mass communi excuse me, communications, is undergoing a dramatic transformation. While more and more people are turning to the web and mobile media for their news and information, newspapers and broadcast media are losing readers, viewers, and revenue. Strategic communicators, advertising and public relations professionals, are also trying to figure out how to target their messages to an increasingly fractured audience. So yes, there is a lot ahead, 
that is uncertain and unknown. But I'm going to tell you something that I truly believe in, and that is, even in this tough climate, especially in this tough climate, you all are going to do just fine. As P.I. Reed School of Journalism graduates, you have nothing to fear. You are multi-skilled and multi-talented. You have the education and training to adapt to a variety of situations. Your degree has value. These are exciting, uh, challenging times, yes, but they are also very exciting. A time full of endless possibility and endless promise. During tough times, people turn to the media more than ever, looking for information, explanation, and hope. And you will be called upon as journalists and communicators to help the public determine what is real and what is relevant to their lives. You will do that by reporting the news across media platforms, by crafting persuasive messages that impact behavior and values, and by using social media to engage and empower a new generation of media consumers. And you will do so with integrity, with heart, and with a great sense of responsibility and purpose. How do we know that? We know that because we know you. Remember that four, five, six years we spent together? We've gotten to know you very well, and we know you will be successful. Because we know you, we are confident that each of you here today will make your mark, and in the process, you will make the world a better place. Today's speaker has also made the world a better place through her in-depth reporting, insightful commentary, and her warm, engaging personality. Now, many of you may recognize Brooke Gladstone from her voice on the radio. She is the host and managing editor of a show called On the Media. It's a program about news coverage and media trends that airs weekly on national public radio. Gladstone started out as a print journalist, writing about topics ranging from defense policy to strip mining to broadcasting and cable TV. Her fr freelance articles and essays have appeared in such publications as the London Observer, the Boston Globe, the Washington Post, and the American Journalism Review, just to name a few. Gladstone joined NPR in 1987, first as senior editor of Weekend Edition Saturday, then as senior editor of NPR's signature news program, All Things Considered. After she received a prestigious Knight Fellowship to study Russian history and language at Stanford, NPR sent Gladstone to Moscow. There, she reported on Russian life and politics after the breakup of the Soviet Empire, including the country's violent constitutional crisis in the early 90s. In 1995, NPR created the Media Beat and gave it to Gladstone, which she covered for six years. In 2001, she was tapped to relaunch on the media, which is produced by WNYC in WNYC, New York. Since then, the show has more than tripled the size of its audience and won several top journalism awards. Gladstone has received her own share of accolades, including a Peabody Award, the Overseas Press Club Award, and the Milwaukee Press Club's Sacred Cat Award for Lifetime Achievement. And we'll leave it to Brooke to explain what that is. Um, it involves a stuffed cat, I believe, but, but at any rate. Uh, Gladstone is also an author. Her new book, The Influencing Machine, which is due out in three days, uh, offers an overview of journalism from ancient Rome to the penny press to today's media explosion, and it's told in Bro Brooke's unique voice and in comic form. Yes, it's a comic book about the serious topic about how media influence our lives. One critic writes, Influence, Influencing Machine is an indispensable guidebook for anyone who hopes to navigate the mirages and constant shifting sands of our media landscape. With her deep insights into the evolving media landscape, I can't imagine anybody better to address you, our group of future media practitioners and professional communicators. Class of 2011, I am honored and excited to introduce to you Ms. Brooke Gladstone. Hi. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what was I thinking? Journalism? Every day newspapers fold, turning well-educated journalists onto the streets where they run amok. Every day fit those famous fat TV newscasters' salaries shrivel until, yeah, the utterly unthinkable occurs. 
and public radio suddenly seems a promising career path. What is the world coming to? But I am here to tell you, don't panic. The truth is, you do have the best possible training to live in the world that you're entering. It's a world where the old rules and traditional hierarchies have been overthrown. And nowhere is this truer than in the profession formerly known as journalism. Once there was a roadmap to this business. You work at the school paper, then after graduation, maybe you get an internship, then you get a job at a small paper, then you get a job at a slightly bigger paper, and then inevitably, the Pulitzer Prize. Many people of my generation left college with those expectations. Mostly, they didn't pan out. It was a very rude awakening. But not you guys. You guys see the world as it is. A world where the ground moves under your feet and you don't get to shuffle down a car carpeted corridor to retirement. A world where you have to stay awake, to improvise, to invent. A world in which truly what you know is more important than who you know, what your parents do, or even where you graduated from. I wish I knew what you know when I was where you are now. So what specifically do you know that I didn't? Well, you're living in Marshall McLuhan's dictum that the medium is the message. That may be bad news for people of my generation, but it's good news for you who are digital natives because you get to rewrite the rules. You know, the current rules of journalism were not carved on a stone tablet. They weren't carried down Mount Sinai by Edward R. Murrow to be followed for the rest of time. They are the creation of historic convergences, of cyclical collisions of politics and technology. An example. A couple of centuries ago, political parties mostly ran newspapers, and they cost a hefty six cents a copy. That was too expensive for the average Joe, the average working Joe. Then in, then in 1833, the New York Sun slashed the price to a penny. Why? Because of one of those convergences that I mentioned, the invention of steam-driven rotary presses could flood the streets with cheap newsprint to serve a huge and burgeoning population of immigrants and workers. And all this was happening at the very moment when a fractured political culture was furiously debating what America was to become. All the penny press magnates needed was a new business model to rake in the cash. And they found it. Advertising! They didn't need political backers, they had ads. The penny papers proudly declared their political independence. Now they could be impartial. Uh-huh. The impartial New York Herald editor James Gordon Bennett wrote impartial editorials, for instance, calling Lincoln a fourth-rate lecturer who delivered unmitigated trash while filling his empty pockets with dollars coined out of Republican fanaticism. Objectivity. Tastes so good and good for you. The press was not and could not be impartial then. Neither the era's technology nor the politics supported it. American politics was fractured and remained so for a very long time. Impartiality didn't pay the bills. But it was politically free. I can't believe I'm popping the peas on this mic. I'm the professional here, and I keep getting it wrong. I'm getting to you guys in a second, so stay with me. Flash forward 100 years or so to mid-century America. It's a very different place and a brand new convergence of politics and technology. Communism and the bomb had plunged America into an existential crisis. The government could tolerate nothing less than unity and consensus. And for the first time, consensus, not controversy, was the media's top priority too. Why? because the era's shiny new technology was very, very expensive. Very. Television needed huge audiences to attract enough advertising to make programs to make money. So once again, 
politics and technology converge to give rise to a new standard for journalism. They called it objectivity. As I said, to wage the Cold War, the government demanded ideological conformity. To be profitable, TV needed to be a kind of mirror of an America that would keep the masses tuning in. So it reflected a non-controversial image that was white, Christian, middle class, with no accents and no last names ending in vowels except as comic relief. It gave us Leave it to Beaver and it gave us the news anchor Walter Cronkite, we called Uncle Walter, once voted the most trusted man in America who rarely showed an emotion and ended his nightly newscasts with the rock solid assertion that that's the way it is. That's what he'd say at the end of every broadcast. That's the way it is. Thus began the golden era of objectivity and its rules have governed journalism ever since. The rules of objectivity, exclusive and as narrow as they are, have produced coverage that adheres to the middle of the political spectrum, excludes views on the margins, focuses on the government, and gives sh short shrift to labor, unlike the penny press did. Objective coverage expresses middle American middle class values and addresses middle American middle class concerns. Okay, journalists have done fabulous work in the golden age of objectivity. But they also did fabulous work in the age of the penny press. In fact, America's post-revolutionary papers also did fabulous work, even though those early papers boiled over with venom and libel. You, my friends, are graduating in the middle of another historic convergence, the biggest yet. Our current era of political fragmentation is converging with a communications technology that thrives on audience fragments. Consensus is no longer economically essential. Objectivity, quote unquote, is on the ropes. Digital media has its own tone, its own syntax, you can see the difference in the online parts of the New York Times or the Washington Post. Now, you don't have to join a monastic order of uncommitted, passionless priests to do journalism. Look, I know it's rough out there, as rough as it's been in a very long time. So you have to ask yourself, why did I want to go into this business? What inspired me? I majored in theater. I was going to be an actor. I got very mad at my school, which happened to be the University of Vermont, when I realized that I'd been given a few basic tools but no real survival skills. I was dropped into the dark, haunted forest of my future life with a book of matches and a bowie knife. It's kind of like outward bound. After getting fired from about half a dozen waitress jobs, broke, depressed, I realized I wasn't going to make it as an actor. So I did what panicked liberal arts majors always do when staring into the abyss. I applied to law school. But I didn't go. I started writing. And that was the beginning of another nightmare. I offered to work for free for a little wire service in DC. That turned me down. I wrote pamphlets for a disarmament group. I got my first actual job writing for a strip mining trade association magazine. I got fired from that. It was a very slow progression. I scuttled like a crab sideways into my profession. I learned everything that I know about journalism along the way, following the axiom, fake it till you make it. Suddenly it occurred to me that that's what everybody was doing because journalism is all about learning on the fly. Why didn't I realize that at the start? Seriously, keep learning about the technology as it unfolds. Learn about the world. You are not finished here. This is really a commencement. Don't assume that anybody has any secret knowledge that you don't have, because everything is changing even as I talk to you. Everything is up in the air. So don't be afraid. Everything you've learned about journalism will teach you about the world. 
Everything that you've learned about the world will help you be a journalist. Acting helped me be a better radio reporter. Waitressing, who knows, it probably would have helped if I'd been any good at it. I repeat, the key thing here is to not be afraid. Make money doing other things if you have to, but follow your passion. If you care about justice and you hear about a crooked judge, investigate and post. If you care about the environment and you hear about a polluting company, check it out and post. If you care about education, tell that story. Care about revolutions on the other side of the globe? Assemble a Twitter community and amplify the message from abroad. But no matter what your convictions are, don't ever lie. <laughs> Seems obvious. And I know that you've all been taught the best possible principles. But when you realize that the outward show of objectivity no longer applies, it doesn't mean the fundamental rules of fairness have gone away. Don't ever lie. Don't ever leave out information that weakens your argument. Care, commit, be passionate, but be fair. Don't misrepresent people with whom you disagree. Don't be arrogant. You could be wrong. The biggest danger lies in letting yourself off the hook by deciding an issue and walking away from information that conflicts with your views. The pragmatist William James once said that the greatest enemy of any one of our truths may be the rest of our truths. Don't be afraid. The old business is circling the drain. We don't know what the no new business will look like. But no matter where you end up, no matter what you end up doing with your life, you will have the tools to tap into the world's richest, most renewable resource, and that's information. You know how to get it. You know how to use it. And you've got nothing to lose. So take chances. Take risks. Learn the technology so that you can keep telling your stories to the world. The world is full of liars and cheats. It is in desperate need of people who believe, who honestly believe, that the truth can set us free. Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Anna Quinlan once said that being a reporter is as much a diagnosis as it is a job description. I believe that, I really do. I need to do what I do. I process the world this way. I record everything. I don't understand anything until I've explained it to someone else. So if that's your diagnosis, I salute you. May there never be a cure. Thank you.
Thank you, and thank Brooke Gladstone for your wonderful remarks. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, Ta -da. the granting of the diplomas. Associate Professor of Visual Journalism, Joel Beeson, will read the names of the graduation candidates in the following order. First, IMC and MSJ candidates. Then, by undergraduate program, advertising, broadcast news, news editorial, our new converged, converged journalism major, and public relations. The program directors will hood the master's degree candidates, and I will present the diplomas. For the bachelor's degree candidates, program chairs will present the diplomas. Also on stage to congratulate all graduation candidates to represent the university will be WVU's Vice President for University Relations, Chris Martin. At this time, we will begin the official conferring of the degrees. First, I'll read the names of uh, candidates for Master of Science in Integrated Marketing Communications. Bethany Teal Allen Perez. Bridget Nicole Borst. Amanda N. Bird. Jamie Liesel Caldwell. <laughs> Melissa Catherine Kostranova. Kathy Marie Chickerell. George Michael Cece. Casey Lynn Sid. <laughs> April Joy Clark Hartley. Kimberly Ann Conrad. <laughs> Caitlin Virginia Culver. January L. Davis. <laughs> Stephanie Lynn Elias.
Joanne C. Eshelman. Chantel Nicole Evans. Sierra S. Guard. Andrea Jean Gardeau. Michelle Lynn Goodliff. Shelley W. Green. Lindsay N. Helfer. Flavia Garcia Halsey. Richardson Keaton. <clears throat> Megan A. McPherson. David Morris. <clears throat> Kelly M. Panel. April M. Scott. Andrea S. Siegel.
Kristen Allison Skander. Kristen M. Sloan. Sarah I. Smith. Kristen Aline Snyder. <laughs> Melissa Luann Stegen. Kelly C. Tuckwiller. <laughs> Danielle Elizabeth Williams. Stacy L. Wise. Next, I'll read the candidates for Master of Science in Journalism. Rachel Lara Davis. Rhonda Snow Holland.
Jessica Marie Roberts. Heather Evelyn Salmons. Boya Shu. Will the candidates for a Bachelor of Science in Journalism Advertising please move toward the stage? Jill Lauren Adamson. Anthony J. Anderson. Chalun Badan. Kim Nicole Burnson. George W. Bratina. Jessica L. Chambers. Olivia Catherine Clapper. <laughs> Jody R. Durham. <laughs> Stephanie Nicole Dwyer. Megan A. Engel. Laura Ann Fawner. Corey Robert Fick. Brittany Ann Franklin. K. L. Gallagher. Michael Groom.
Daniel J. Hagee. Catherine M. Haynes. Vanessa Marie Hower. Megan Marie Keating. Travis Scott Lance. Dale R. LaRue. Natasha Denise Lisborne. Alfred F. Lynch III. Daniel Jonathan McMaster. Joey Nicholas Medici. Michael Christian Mayola. Heather Elizabeth Mutz. Jessica Lee Northcutt. Kevin Farrar Nowak. Kristen Michelle Ogden. Julie M. Olson. Armand M. Patella III. Dana Perota. Lauren Christine Riviello. Caitlin Rubenstein. Kelly Marie Schwartz. Karen R. Siegel. Andrew Patrick Smith. Paul G. Smith. Bo Hunter Snar. Jordan J. Sikorsky. Kayla Marie Thorne.
Courtney Janelle Wag. Matthew F. Walt. Amos L. Wheatley IV. Laura M. White. Benjamin M. Wilmoth. Chelsea L. Wright. Lauren Yet. Alexandra C. Ziegler. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science in Journalism broadcast news please move toward the stage. Aaron Thomas Dininger. <laughs> Paul Allen Espinosa. Carrie Elise Guerra. <laughs> Megan E. Gordon. Katie L. Har. Matthew David Hosworth. Alan Z. Holisky. Paul T. King. <laughs> Rodney Dean Lamp II. Frank Wilhite Leitner III. Joseph Edward Maycheck. <laughs> Amina Z. McWilliams.
Ashton Carl Pelham. Timothy Casey Reed. Brandon Lee Ruda. Austin K. Sanders. Marissa D. Statler. Shannon Amanda Teets. Eric William Wadden. Whitney Renee Wetzel. Raymond Paul Zawadny. <laughs> Will the candidates for a Bachelor of Science in Journalism news editorial please move toward the stage. Devon T. Crum. Chelsea Glenn Fuller. <laughs> Kayla R. Grog. Benjamin J. Hancock. Andrew Winkler Holbrook. Paige Leah Lavender. Alyssa R. Murphy. Candace Rose Nelson. Kara Colleen Traver.
Will the candidates for a Bachelor of Science in Journalism please move toward the stage? Caitlin Anderson. Ryan A. Brashler. John William Cassell. <laughs> Kaylin Miranda Christopher. Clayton. <laughs> Samantha Ann Cossett. Christiana Crawley. <laughs> Leah Cunningham. Trevor J. Gerard. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Greco. <laughs> Alexander Wayne Kearns. Josephine Amber King. Kirsten M. Costco. Andrew James Lawson. <laughs> Brittany Ann Lowe. Evan Caulfield Moore. Jeremy Scott Neely. 
Matthew L. Peck. Anne Catherine Rice. Andrea Corinne Sawyer. Sayers D. Seaman. Devin Thomas Unger. Ashley Renee Ward. Morgan Danielle Young. Will the candidates for Bachelor of Science in Journalism Public Relations, please move toward the stage. Stacy Ann Ayla. Lindsay Michelle Bailey. Daniela N. Balcazar. Catherine G. Barker. Karen Ann Lee Bates.
Stacy Jennifer Bernstein. Octavia Ann Blount. Andrew W. Brendel. Rebecca Marie Broadcourt. Alicia Millette Canterbury. Laura Michelle Cardin. Amanda Ann Sictor. Tori Elizabeth Coppola. Liesel Anne Crowder. Kara Maureen Crowley. Jennifer Marie Cruz. Rebecca M. Davis. Erica Marie Dibel. Jonathan Richard DeLauder. <laughs> Meredith Dempsey. <laughs> Rebecca Jane Dean. Tiffany Doolittle. Grant Stephen Dovey. Anna Jade Anderson. Brooke Monteverde Farber. Lauren Nicole Ferrigno. Daniel Truman Frey. Gina Marie Gentili. Christina Kimberly Nazo. Hannah M. Gordon. Jessica May Hammond. Megan Kathleen Haplia. <laughs> Ch 
Chelsea Lee Hathaway. Emily Michelle Hibbs. Trey R. Holler. Michael S. Huddleston. Michael Joseph Ingrisano. Martha Janeski. Michael Robert Joseph. Kelly Elizabeth Joyce. Lauren E. Kelly. Lindsay E. Kenders. Jordan Elizabeth Kennedy. Christina Donia Kershaw. Catherine Christine Corey. Julie Angeline Koval. Jessica Emily Lepper. Marissa Renee Leozzi. Adrian Nicole Lundell. Caitlin Marie Mann. Lauren Rose Mayaki. Matt Richard Marion. <laughs> Melissa Beth Marlowe. <laughs> Nicholas Stephen Mazarisi. Alexander L. McPherson. Alicia Marie Merico. Mallory Christine Miles. Megan Kathleen Mishler. Mel Morias.
Matthew L. Morris. Abigail Catherine Norman. Elizabeth Irene O'Connell. Megan Dawn Audi. Jacqueline Nicole Page. Lauren Jessica Poslowski. Matthew R. Peasley. Elizabeth Ann Pytranton. Valerie J. Pitt. Benjamin James Remo. Katrina L. Rundle. Sasha H. Saloon. Sarah Elizabeth Sandler. Anna Marie Scarberry. Alyssa Lynn Schmidt. Laura Rose Schroeder. Paige Selly. Erin Marie Shepherd, Benjamin Wade Saminsky, Sarah L. Silva. Jordan Blair Silberman. Anna Elizabeth Smith. Christina Andrea Snyder. Paige Michelle Starchett. <laughs> Catherine Elizabeth Stone. <laughs> Brittany Paige Sullivan.
Elizabeth Swearingen. Rachel Kathleen Taylor. Tyler R. Thorngate. Justin Robert Van White. Amy Lynn Warrington. Jordan L. Weissenborn. Caitlin Lee Wirtz. Nicole Linnell Whitman. Jacqueline Babette Williamson. Meg Ann Workman. Elizabeth Jane Young. I want to say congratulations, but we're not there yet. Hold on. Ah, just a tease. I would now like to introduce Chris Martin, WVU's Vice President for University Relations. In addition to representing the university, Martin also represents excellence in journalism and communications as an award-winning journalist, journalism professor, and the former dean of the P.I. Reed School of Journalism. Martin will lead the official conferring of West Virginia University degrees. Okay, we're gonna make this legal. So, I need you all to stand. Will the candidates from the Pearly Izzy Reed, oh no, just those are getting degrees, sorry. All was a little too broad. Well, all of you who are candidates, from the Pearly Isaac Reed School of Journalism, stand. Candidates for the degree. Your role in commuting, communicating ideas, in documenting people and their lives, and in giving voice to the truth, that role has never been more essential to America or to the world. You have studied journalism and mass communications at arguably the most exciting time in its history. The challenges to journalists and communicators have never been greater, but the opportunities for journalists and communicators have never been greater. And you, because all of you studied here, are prepared to face those challenges and take those opportunities. School of Journalism has taught you well, I know that. It's wed you to the marriage of technology and theory. It's grounded your education in the turbulent and exciting and head-spinning world that awaits you out there. You are ready for the 21st century. Hardwired to technology, merged with multiple media, and densely saturated with information, but the means to sort it out and to sail along with it. And so today, I'm going to trade you. 
I'm going to confer your degree, but I give a charge to you from the university. So here's what we're asking you. As you enter the world beyond Morgantown, speak with clarity and conviction. No mumbling. Maintain your devotion to the truth. Always do what's right, even when it's hard, and even when you're made to feel wrong about doing what's right. Understand always that being a good person and a good journalist are never mutually exclusive. You, all of you, will narrate the stories of the world hold that responsibility pretty close. As West Virginia University graduates, you're responsible to both West Virginia and to the world. Dream big, dream with wide open eyes, and dream with wide open hearts. Share your pride in this university wherever you go. You are West Virginia University's best ambassadors for the life-changing power of education. So here it is, here it is. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the West Virginia Board of Governors, I hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights, honors, and privileges appertaining thereto. As West Virginia's newest graduates, move your tassels to the left as a symbol of your achievement. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, now I can say it. It's official. Congratulations, class of 2011. <laughs> While every graduate is special, we also pay tribute today to those students who have demonstrated academic excellence. So now I would like to recognize our students in the WVU Honors College who are identified by their gold gowns. Will the Honors College students please stand and be recognized? You will also notice that many of our students are wearing gold and blue braided cords. Now these are students who are graduating with Latin honors, either cum laude, magna cum laude, or summa cum laude. And this is based on the student's overall grade point average. Many students today are also wearing gold braided cords. They are members of Kappa Ta Alpha, the Journalism and Mass Communications Honor Society. So now, will the Latin Honor students and the KTA members, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> this year, the School of Journalism was also fortunate to have three students named as WVU Foundation Outstanding Seniors for 2011, an award that recognizes the top WVU graduating seniors for their contributions and achievements in scholarship, leadership, and service. These students are Paige Lavender, Evan Moore, and Candace Nelson. Will the three of you please stand and be recognized? In addition, the School of Journalism honors its own top graduating seniors. 
These are students who have earned the highest grade point average in their sequence, as well as the senior with the highest GPA in the graduating class. So at this time, I will be calling each of you the, to the stage one at a time. And what I ask each of you is that you stay on the stage until all the names are called. The top scholar in advertising this year in the School of Journalism is Lauren Riviella. The top scholar in broadcast news is Marissa Statler. The top scholar in news editorial is Candace Nelson. We hug a lot here in the School of Journalism, in case you haven't noticed. And the top scholar in the new uh, Converged Journalism major is Evan Moore. The top scholar in public relations is Christina Kersoul. Congratulations to all of these top students. And one more award from given to one of these people on the stage. It is to the top overall graduating senior. And this is the student who has, the, has graduated with the highest grade point average in the School of Journalism. This year, that student is Candace Nelson. Okay, thank you all very much. Finally today, class of 2011, as you leave WVU, I would like to impart some final words of advice, and I promise to be brief. First of all, as you enter the working world, be bold. Most of you are leaving the safety of the school environment for a new phase in your life. You're about to embark on a journey, but nobody has given you a roadmap. Don't let anybody fool you. Your 20s are a challenging time as you figure out what you want to do and who you want to be and how you want to live your life. And the liberating but also scary thing is that these will be your decisions. No one else, 
Not your parents, not your teachers, not your boyfriend or girlfriend can determine your future. But don't let the fear of the unknown paralyze you. Get started, get moving, take chances. Pursue one path and if it doesn't pan out, find another way. If somebody says no, find somebody else to say yes. Be focused and determined and make your own breaks. Be smart, not just book smart, but savvy, which means seeing the bigger picture and figuring out how you fit into it. Be an avid student of your profession, determine what is needed and how you can add value. Be yourself. Ultimately, to be successful, you will need to figure out what you're good at and what you're not. And then you'll need to be build a career around those strengths rather than your weaknesses. Use your head, but learn to listen to your heart. Find out what motivates you, what inspires you, and what is true for you. Find your own voice, your own passion. If you love what you do and you don't worry so much about the money, chances are you will succeed in work and life. You also need to be of use. Give back to your family, to your friends, to your community, and of course to your alma mater. I'm not just talking about financially, and of course if you're in a position to do so, we will graciously accept your donations. But what I'm really talking about is helping the students who follow you by sharing your connections, your insights, and your experiences. I know many of you have benefited from having alumni come back to classes and, and tell you their story. Ask yourself when you wake up in the morning, not what am I going to do today, but what will be my contribution? I'm sure that some of you have figured this out already, but by giving, you get so much more in return. Finally, and most importantly, you need to be in the moment. When you get to be my age, and the age of your parents, you will realize that life is best lived not as a series of tomorrows, but as a, a collection of moments like this one. Moments of great joy, great sorrow, and amazing grace. Moments that can only be experienced by paying attention to the here and now, to what's right in front of you, rather than what lies ahead. And believe me, Life goes a lot quicker than you think. You get just one shot at it. So, class of 2011, I'm stealing something from the American poet, Mary Oliver, and giving you this parting question. What is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? Whatever you do, make it matter. We are counting on you. Congratulations, class of 2011. Now please stand for the singing of the alma mater. 